Tasume. That means God guides me in Benin language. Tuesday, August 25th, 1992. So this very moment I stand before you today. My life story has been evidence that God has truly guided me. He has held my hand each and every step of the way. I'm here today to talk to you about the power of transition, specifically how to use Godfidence in transitioning. Godfidence simply means God's confidence. I'll be telling you three stories. One borders on my career path, the other borders on pain and loss, and the third borders on love and marriage. I moved back to the country in 2014. I got my high school diploma, then my bachelor's degree, then my master's in corporate and organizational communications from Northeastern University in Boston, Massachusetts. After that, I got a TV certificate from New York Film Academy for TV and film production. So coming back to the country, I was very confident that organizations will be rushing me, not me rushing them. But as most of you know, especially the youths in the room today, it was very difficult. I applied to several organizations for advertising, and I didn't hear back from most of them. However, the few that responded told me that due to the upcoming 2015 general elections, they were not looking to hire at the time because they were uncertain the way the country was going to go after the elections. So being the never say never kind of girl, being stubborn about your dreams, never taking no for an answer, I started my own advertising firm. I took advantage of the political situation in the country. I reached out to gubernatorial, senatorial, and even presidential candidates. I told them to give me an opportunity to run two advertising jingles for them, one for television and one for radio. It was an absolute hit. My team and I made more money than we could have ever imagined. But I went back to God, I asked him, we're making so much money, but why don't I feel fulfilled? Why do I still feel a very heavy burden in my chest, despite the fact that I'm succeeding? And he reminded me of an incident that occurred when I was on my way to school when I was a little girl. My parents and I lived in Lagos, and on our way to school, we saw a young girl my age hawking on the street. And I remember vividly, I asked my mom, how come she's hawking on the street while I get to go to school? And she made it categorically clear to me, not everyone has the privilege of the childhood that you do. From that very moment, I made it my determination to ensure that whatever I do in life would promote equity, justice, and fairness for all. Fast forward to 2014, God reminded me of that situation. So I gathered up the funds I was making and I visited many of the IDP camp, which is the Internally Displaced Persons Camp in Abuja. We built shack houses, schools, we gave scholarships, we fed, we clothed the thousands of people across Abuja. But despite the frequent visits to the IDP camps by my team and I, I still felt dissatisfied. This is due to the numerous complaints from the internally displaced persons that they felt abandoned by government. They felt neglected by both their state and federal government. They claimed, we are Nigerians. How can we be forgotten because we've been thrown out by Boko Haram? I went back to God again, and I asked him, what more can I do? He said to me, that is no coincidence. I've put you in a position where you have a good rapport with those who are soon to be elected. And you also have a good rapport with the internally displaced, the masses who also happen to be the electorate. Now I expect you to be the bridge between this divide. That is how the Osasu Show came about. Most of you have heard of the Osasu Show, where I proudly question politicians, ask them the tough question about how they intend to implement their blueprint policies they always promise during the election time. I've sat down with ministers, state governors, even our president, Mohamed Buhari. I have asked them about how their policies trickle down to the poorest of the poor in our society. In 2019, I felt I had done enough in front of the cameras, so I said it's time to transition to what's next. I told my family about my decision, but due to a very grave family incident that happened in 2019, they thought it was more of the grief speaking than me. So I let their wisdom prevail. 
In March this year of 2020, we celebrated the seventh year anniversary of the Osasu show. Then the Holy Spirit said to me, it's time to transition. After seven years of hard work, seven years of going into communities like Agato local government in Benue State, where hundreds were killed by Fulani herdsmen, going into communities such as Goska and Dangoma in Kaduna, where hundreds were killed by Fulani herdsmen, and the Osasu show took the risk to highlight the voices of the voiceless. We went there and we succeeded in telling their stories. We bridged the gap between the electorate and the elected. We drove state government funds to those local governments. And we're proud of the work that we did for the Osasu show. So this year in March, I finally hung up my television hat and I transitioned to what's next. I asked God, thank you. I told God, thank you for this opportunity to serve. Now tell me what's next. Fortunately for us, we got our television license from the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation, TOS TV, and now we're telling Pan-African stories. Our mission is to give a voice to Africa, because as we all know, the story will forever glorify the hunter as long as the hunted doesn't have its voice. It's a Herculean task, one that I am very capable of handling. We are at the startup phases right now, but I am enjoying the challenges because they are the same challenges we had when I started the Osasu show. I remember in 2016, we had only 15,000 Naira in our bank account. This was after making so much money from media campaigns. No one wanted to advertise again because they were already in power. But I said to God then, you who have asked me to do this, you will give me the wisdom on how to make resources to continue. So even as we start to go through the startup phases of TOS TV network, I am not perturbed because I know God is with me and I have Godfidence to keep on going. So this is my career journey. This is how I have used Godfidence to transition. The second story I would tell you is about pain and loss. I mentioned earlier that in 2019, my family went through a very tragic time. We were hit by such overwhelming news that we did not know where to even begin. On February 15th, we got a call from a family member in the United States that my younger brother had been involved in a car accident. They told us he had passed away. But being children of God, we were like, that cannot happen to us. No weapon fashioned against us can prosper, right? So we were in disbelief. For over two weeks before we flew to the United States, we just kept on praying that we would hear from him or hear some positive news. However, we finally arrived at the United States, my siblings and I. We went to the morgue and we saw my brother's lifeless body laying there. It was the most heartbreaking, heart-wrenching thing that had ever happened to us. We're Christians. We believe in God. We serve no other God but him. How can that happen to us? That question lingered on my mind for two years. I was sad, depressed, heartbroken. I couldn't even talk about it to friends and family. But one day I said to God, it's time to move on. It's time to transition. What's next for me? Because I cannot remain in this stage forever. And thankfully, just as God is always faithful, he came through. He surrounded me with people who love me, people who nurtured me, people who were patient with me, and he brought me out of that deep, depressive state that I was in. Today, I stand in front of you, a truly happy individual, an individual who is fulfilled, an individual who is healed, and an individual who is filled with the mercy of God. Finally, the third story I would like to share with you today is one of love and marriage. Just a month ago, I got married to the love of my life. <laughs> I remember praying, going on my knees and said, God, look, I'm 28 years old. I am too old and too busy to be suffering from heartbreaks. So you need to send me my husband right now. And the Holy Spirit said to me, your husband is right in front of you. Keep in mind, I was in my room praying by myself. So I look up and I said, I see my curtain. Are you telling me I should marry my curtains? And the Holy Spirit said, Osasu, in all seriousness, your husband is right in front of you. So I started to assess my inner circle, my friends. Who are those people I confide in? Who are those people I pray with? Who are those people that I respect and hold 
in high honor and integrity. So there was this young gentleman who I was always praying with, talking to, and I said to him, this is what happened when I prayed. And he said, really, let's pray about it some more. So we went on a seven-day fast, and after that seven-day fast, we got into a relationship. <laughs> and the rest, they say, is history. So you can see through the trajectory of my story that each and every step of the way, when I had to make an integral decision, I asked God for his direction. I asked God for his confidence, and he always led me to the right path. So today, I encourage each and every one of you who's asking, what's next? What's next in my career? What's next in my personal life? What's next in my health? What's next with my wealth? Look to God for that answer. He will never, ever lead you astray. So today, I implore you to use Godfidence in all that you do. Godfidence is what will keep you resilient. Godfidence is what will keep you courageous, where you will sit with the sitting president of a nation and ask him, how did you implement the funds that were allocated in XYZ budget? Godfidence is what will give you the audacity to keep on failing, but knowing that one day you will succeed because God said you will. So ladies and gentlemen, today, what's next is Godfidence. Thank you very much.